Good evening, Vancouver, and welcome back to Canucks After Dark, August 22nd edition. We are so close to September. We are so close to fall. We are so close to hockey season, but that doesn't mean we have any news for you tonight. No, we don't. But as always, I'm joined by my co-host, Canuck Clay. How are you doing tonight, Clay? I am great, Parker. If we could get through August 15th, where we had absolutely nothing to talk about, I think we can get through tonight as well. By the way, Parker, I uh, I don't know if you can tell I'm a little bit more tan, but not because of Hawaii. I did a, a three-day golf trip to Bellingham. I tried to channel my inner Parker, and it worked for one of my three rounds. Even though the score that I got, you would probably take one and a half rounds to get because it was that high. But still, I was happy. For one round hey, of three. You you did good. You had one good round. And you know what? That's that's what gets you coming back, though. You need the one, you need okay. the, either the one good shot, the one good round. You can play mm. terribly, but that'll always get you coming back. And uh you, we, our match is still pending. Uh <laughs> and uh we'll we'll gotta we'll have to do some handicap calculations there uh to get that yes. dialed in to make it as even as possible. My initial reaction is twenty yeah, twenty to twenty two strokes, I think. Well, that, that that round you just had is going to hurt your your handicap a little bit. It's going to help me out. So okay. we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> um, we have a little bit to talk about tonight. Um, we've got uh, Canada winning World Junior Gold in the middle of August for the first time ever um, hmm. with very little fanfare other than one save, basically. Uh, we'll talk about yeah. that a little bit. We've got Nazem Kadri going to the Calgary Flames. We've got the Oilers trying to load up. We've got the Russians being in Vancouver. We have at least four things to briefly talk about, and then we'll have to go to you, the people, to uh, to support us the rest of the way, as you have done so well in the past. I love it. I love it. And by the way, how are you? You always start by asking me how I'm doing, and I always sometimes I forget to ask, how are you, my friend? I'm good. Uh, I just got yeah. back from uh, from uh, the interior a little bit uh, up in mm. up in Princeton area. Had a nice little weekend away. Uh, nice. Just uh, getting back in the groove. Uh, yeah. Looking forward to the next long weekend, which I guess is two weeks away, which will be nice. True, true. Stack. Did you golf at all in Princeton? No, no. I was just up at a cabin okay. with some with some friends. So uh, okay. the 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 most uh, the most athletic we we uh, most athleticism we had was a game called beer baseball. Uh, which I'm not going to go too far into, but that should let you know how uh, how much of a fitness-oriented weekend it was. I'm glad you're here and back safely. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Where do you want to start tonight? What do What do we want to do? Do we want to talk about the Canucks and all that yeah. Canucks news we have? Yeah, I think you know we always joke around. We are called Canucks after dark, even though I think the other stories are bigger, the World Juniors and the Cadres. But let's let's start with the Canucks, and then we can get to the big stories. And if we come back to the Canucks, we come back to the Canucks too. Sounds good. All right, yeah. where do you want to start? How about the Russians are here? Yes, Kuzmenko and Mikhaev. I'm assuming yeah. I only saw the Kuzmenko one. Yeah. Um, Kuzmenko going between the legs upstairs on that one move I saw. Uh, that the Canucks yeah. posted on their Twitter, and that's good enough for me. He's going to be putting up 70 points. That's my prediction for the year, <laughs> and I'm going to nail it. I'm, we're not overestimating like we did last year. Uh, yes. Everyone's getting 70-plus points. Yeah. I did uh, I did um, like what the Canucks social team did today. They did uh, one video each of the two players. Then they did a, uh, one post of all pictures. In another post of video, I, I thought it was pretty cool. And it, you know what was really funny? They had each player, Parker, introduce themselves, right? And say, you know, hello, Vancouver fans. I'm, and then Andre, he sounded like Andrea, but he just speak really cra- fast. He said Andre Kuzmenko. So I got that one. But then when Mikhaev, Mikhaev spoke, obviously he says it the way he likes to say it. And it didn't even sound like anything. So I, I had to check the number on his helmet to make sure that was the right guy. <laughs> that is, that's great. I actually didn't see it. So. Check it out. I'm Tell me what prepared. you hear. Yes. Okay. I yes, will do but, that later on. But I think we're starved for hockey content. Uh, tomorrow marks a one week. Uh, sorry, excuse me. One month until the opening of training camp. You know, there's young stars and everything before that. But yeah, we're one month away from training camp, basically, in Whistler. Pretty darn exciting. And I think you can see from the reaction on Twitter, Canucks fans are starved for any type of content, just like we are starved as content creators for content. So it's cool to see them wearing the Canucks uniform for the first time, even though it was a practice uniform. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it builds that excitement a little bit. Again, it's still about yeah. a month away and then really yeah. a month and a half to two months away before we start getting, uh, some actual games, which will be nice. Get back in the yeah. rinks. 
Um, I'm sure, I'm sure we'll both be around the rink a, a fair amount this year coming up, and it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. Uh, for now, a little bit of football to tie me over. I'm starting to keep track of, but yeah, uh, you know, we got the big the big golf playoffs this weekend, and that's kind of yes. interesting. But it's it not there's nothing like hockey season. Uh, so really gonna yeah. try to enjoy these last few weeks of summer uh, before Good. we have to dive into um, this winter and hopefully a competitive product on the ice of these two players, Parker, who are you more intrigued by different situations? Obviously one of them's got a one year cheap contract. The other one's got a four year expensive contract. What do you think? I, I think McKay is more important, uh, yeah. but I'm more intrigued by Kuzmenko. Um, uh, because Mikheyev, again, there's, there's much more risk involved, right? For your deal, um, at a, at a pretty mid-level salary for a guy who hasn't been really a mid-level guy for much of his career, um, where the Canucks need Mikheyev to be good. Mm -hmm. Um, Kuzmenko, we know nothing about other than he put up a bunch of points in Russia last year, which sometimes translates, sometimes doesn't, but there is no real risk to the Canucks. It's found right. money, right? He's either excellent and the Canucks either trade him and get something good or re-sign him uh, uh, to a longer term deal and have him as a piece uh, for the years to come, or he's not good and they can just let him go. Uh, no harm, no foul. Uh, yeah. we're, I mean, like worst case, maybe he's not that good and he puts up 30 points on a really cheap contract for one year anyways, right? Mm -hmm. There's not much, there's, there's no downside here. Um, but definitely more intriguing because we really don't know what to expect. Yeah, you're great point. Him, Huglander, Pod Colson. Uh, uh, when I say him, Kuzmenko, all on contracts making one million dollars or less, which is which is really really good. We keep talking about how you got to play your contract. You know, it's funny, Parker. Uh, some people get so excited they want to see an all Russian line, but I think they forget that none of those three guys play center. <laughs> that is important. Um, <laughs> apparently, Elias Pettersson doesn't either according to that one tweet yeah. that, that did the oh, rounds yeah. yesterday um oh. but no yeah you need uh you do need someone to win face-offs and playing wing is so much easier than playing center mm. <laughs> it is so much easier your job is simple right if you're a winger you're in your own zone you're either playing on the wall or you're playing on your point and you just sort of cover that guy and then when your team gets the puck you work on the breakout you get to the wall and, and break out in the offensive yeah. zone you sort of just play one half of the ice right you're either playing yeah. on the wall or you're going towards the front of the net behind the net wherever uh center you are a rover you are everywhere in the offensive zone everywhere in the defensive zone basically covering up every loose guy it's so much harder um which is why it's so crucial that a guy like Leas Patterson is a, a centerman uh, and why a guy like JT Miller has uh, as much value as we think he does being a centerman that you can't just be like, all right, pod Coles and play some center when he's never done it in his career. Uh, yeah. It's, it's such a big ask. Yes. And I agree with you completely that McKay of there's more expectation. We expect more uh, because of his experience, his contract, but yeah, if I had to pick one of the two, Although I'm really intrigued by him, I'm even more intrigued by by Kuzmenko for sure. By the way, can you reference uh, that? Can you explain to everyone what you're talking about about that Elias Pettersson isn't a, a center? Because I saw it too, and it's hilarious. It's so funny. Yeah, there was one tweet. I don't remember who it was from, but it got like yeah. tweeted out by the at NHL Twitter account, like sort of referenced, and it was basically uh, some like fantasy guru saying that Pod Colson is going to be the best winger on the Canucks. Sorry, Pettersson and Besser. And it was like, okay, one, everything you said there was wrong. Uh, he's not going to be better than Patterson. He's not going to be better than Besser, yeah. probably. Um, and yeah, Patterson's not a winger. <laughs> Patterson's in center. Um, mm. So yeah, there was a, a wild, a wild uh, tweet that got a lot of play yesterday. Every tweet about the Canucks gets a lot of play here. That's how starved we are. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, JT Miller still trends every three days on Twitter in Vancouver. <laughs> um, is he trending now? Probably not. Well, I say no. probably not, but actually maybe. It uh, doesn't yeah. look like it. Not today. I'm sure we can make him trend if we wanted to. Yeah. Probably. Sure. Yeah. It wouldn't be that hard. <laughs> Jim Rutherford was also on a podcast. Um, where was it? I saw him quoted basically. In, uh, it was in, in the Post Gazette. Pittsburgh oh, okay. Post Gazette. Do you have it in front of you? What he said? I do. I have the whole yeah. article and it was a long article, but basically okay. he was asked why 
um, why he left Pittsburgh, which has sort of been an ongoing topic around Pittsburgh for the last couple of years. Uh, mm. Basically, it was because of COVID. Uh, a lot of it, right? He didn't want to. Uh, didn't want to. Uh, he wasn't able to go into the office for like a year because he was high risk, and he just sort of was done in Pittsburgh. Yeah. And there wasn't much. There wasn't much else to it. Hmm. Wow. Okay. It wasn't. Think- it wasn't that much. <laughs> Yeah, so no fighting with the ownership or nothing like that? Apparently not, but I don't think he'd say that if it was. True, 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 true. And then I also, um, I didn't read the article, but I saw a quote. He basically he referenced the fact that um, there's a lot of work to do here. And yeah. It's going to take a while. No, no surprise there, but yeah. Yeah, I wish it didn't have to take a while, but it does. It does some have people to take are angry. a while. Parker, some people are pretty impatient, you know, really impatient, actually. Yeah, um, I know. I, I've realized that with uh, some <laughs> things that we've seen uh, online and, you know, some of the response we get sometimes. And I, I'm impatient, too. Right. Like, yeah. I'm I'm tired. I want I want this team to win games. Uh, we've had one playoff se- or I guess, two playoff series wins in the last 10 years. And those both both came in a bubble right where there was no one in the stands we didn't get to go to any of the games to get to experience it other than the the party on scott road uh, a couple of times uh down here which was awesome and i'm sad i didn't attend but you know it, it's not the same uh yes. and the, you know all, all i want is to watch this team be successful and be fun and enjoy some wins with you know this community and the whole canucks community um, so I understand why people are impatient, but you have to realize, you know, there, we're not really in a situation to be impatient. Uh, we've, we got to fix some things first. Sure. Sure. And speaking of patience and patience, I, I, I would love to tell you a very, very quick story. And then I'll ask you a question based on it, not a test, but your opinion. So on our, on our, uh, golf trip at the end of the night, after the round, after dinner, we'd go back, play some poker or play some fun games or whatever. And one of the games we played, Parker, was basically it wasn't uh, what do you think, blah, blah, blah. But it's what does Parker think Clay will say about blah, blah, blah. And then we all bet or, you know, Joe and do prediction. And then we hand out chips, blah, blah, blah. So the question was, what does uh, blank think? I think it was my son, Sean. What does Sean think Clay is going to say when the Canucks will win the Stanley Cup next? Right? So what does Sean think that Clay will say will be the year the Canucks win the Stanley Cup? Right. And, and then everyone bets on what they think Sean is going to say my answer would be. So just take a guess what uh, – don't even worry about what Sean – let's skip that part. What, what do you think I um, – no, actually, no. What do you think Sean, my son, would say that I think would be the year the Canucks win the Cup? I don't know how much he knows about your thought process, but I know he probably thinks let's very positive. Knows a lot, uh, yes, uh, knows yes, a lot yes. that I would say probably four years Oh, very now. good. Yep. I said – yeah. I said 20 – I said 25, 26. Yeah. So three years now. Very good. So you would, you would uh, at least split some money there. Good job. Good job. Nice. Yeah. I, and I just, I, I'm in, I, what do I think? What do I think you would think? No, what do you think you think? <laughs> what do you think? Uh, hopefully in our lifetimes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would say, look, the bet, the best shot with this group, because basically you're going to, you get, you get that run every, you know, 10 years or so, yeah. maybe in this case, a little longer. Um, I would say with this group, yeah, three, four years uh, is going to be their, their couple of shots at it. Hopefully if they are going to get there uh, yeah. and then they're going to have that, you know, that fall and then they're going to try to hopefully in 20 years, they're having another one. And it's, that gets, that gets sad to think about, doesn't it? They're going to yeah. have, they're going to like getting into this sort of contending window. Hopefully like you see Calgary is doing right. Yeah. Calgary is going to make this push and they're going to be a contender probably, or, or thereabouts for the next two, maybe three years. And then they're going to have 10 years of probably nothing because that's just yep. how the league works in a salary cap era, um, which is really sad to think about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now I'm sad again. I was in such a good mood, ready to do the show. Yeah, Coach Rob mentioning he's been waiting 52 years, all 52 year, two years of the Canucks' existence. I'm 48, so I'm um, I'm only a few years behind him. Parker, you're a youngin, and I can. So if you think you're frustrated or wanting, imagine what us old folks feel like. But I'm not saying better, or worse fans, just sharing the pain. 
sharing mm-hmm. the pain. Yeah. I mean, my, you know, I think back of my sort of original hockey memories, right. Of the, my defining moments as a kid growing up. And it was, uh, I think, Oh, 2001 or 2002 against Detroit. Um, the, the, oh, no. you know, that, you, you that series, uh, yeah. I remember I was watching that on ESPN or whatever it was. Uh, and then, uh, Minnesota, yeah. uh, Manny Fernandez. I remember pretty vividly. Uh, those were like the, there was the Brendan Morrison goal and that was a highlight. Uh, but the rest of it was sad <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and it has been ever since. Great. Awesome. All right. Good mood. Let's move on. Um, uh, should, what, was there any other Canucks stuff? Apparently Rick Dollywall saying the Canucks are poking around on Evan Rodriguez and Calvin yeah. Bahan. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, you know, the Rodriguez one's interesting because he had 19 goals last year, but that's the only that's his biggest season ever. He's already 29, so he's probably trying to cash in a little bit on his best season ever. I do like him, and I do mm-hmm. think if you get him, he, you can play him third or fourth line center and then move Miller back to the wing, blah, blah, blah. I don't like the Calvin DeHaan thought. I, I, right. I looked him up. He's old, and he makes a lot of money. So to me, that one le- makes less sense. Although, if, is he a right shot guy? Is that what they're talking about him? I don't know. No, Maybe. I think he's left. Oh, he's not. Okay, then no, no as thanks as to Calvin DeHaan and maybe uh, at least a look see to Evan Rodriguez if you get him cheap, but he's gonna want to yeah, get paid he shoots, this year. He sure. shoots left. Yeah, there's I don't get it. Um, yeah. And yeah, he's coming off four and a half million dollar contract. Um, oh, cool. So that's yeah, you don't need a lefty man uh, really, yeah. unless you know maybe it is maybe there's an issue with Tucker Pullman. Uh, you know that injury yeah. issue, but again, still, I don't think you. That's I don't think that's the replacement you're looking for. I think you're kind of finding another Tucker Pullman, or you might yeah. want to do something different. Uh, and then Rodriguez is a center, I think, yeah. right? And right he'd be sort center. of like a like a third line center, um, yes. which I guess would push Miller up from being the three C, or Bo yeah. up from being the three C, or however you have it set up, um, yeah. which might be nice. Uh, and probably round out the top six pretty well. But I think, yeah, he's going to want a, a pretty decent chunk of change, I would have to imagine. Yep, more than the million he was making for sure. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is he only, only making a million bucks? Yeah, he had 43 yeah. points last year. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he's going to get, uh, he's, I mean, he's going to get probably three and a half, I'd have to guess, something around there. Wow. Well, speaking of money, Lucas, thank you for the donation. Very philosophical, but I agree. It's about the journey. Not the destination. Well, I guess it's both. The Stanley Cup is the toughest trophy in all pro sports. Trust me, I want to get it. Well, I'm with you, Lucas, and Parker's with me. And yeah, we all want the ring. It's the toughest trophy in all of pro sports for the players. Um, but right, right. Compared to every other pro sport, it's the same amount of odds as as football, as basketball. Mm-hmm. Slightly worse than basketball now, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, we got the Seahawks championship eight, nine years ago, which was great. Um, but to me, it's it's it is about the journey, but it's a lot about the destination too, yes, because both. that's going to be a, a much more fun time. Yeah. Last Canucks thing, real quick. Uh, I also heard Rick Dollywell say he texted with this Swedish coach of the uh, the coach mm. of the Swedish road Junior team and said Lekaramaki was just came off of mono yeah, prior to the tournament. It was that's, battling mono going into the tournament. That's tough. Yeah, that does make playing harder. Uh, I mean, I, I heard that Swedish coach also say like he was just okay, um, which to me, if you are just getting over mono, I, I think just okay is okay, right? I don't yeah. think we should be panicking over that. It's not great, but yeah. I would I would call it excusable. Yes. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And he's he'll get another shot four months from now in December, so uh, we'll oh see how goodness. he does. Our, I guess that's true. That's so. Is that crazy? Yeah, Isn't that crazy. So maybe maybe a good jumping off point is a good segue to McTavish Johnson and a gold medal win for Team Canada. So let's talk about on ice first, and let's talk about the off ice issues. Not, not, yeah, after so the actual game, I only saw the third and overtime. I don't know about you. Uh, I was I was out of cell service until I got home yesterday afternoon, uh, yeah. and the first thing I saw, I went onto the hockey subreddit, and there was the clip of the Mason McTavish save, which was great yeah. because the clip didn't spoil the ending of the game. 
<laughs> so I still didn't know who won. And then I found right under it was the post of the full video of the overtime. So I watched the full overtime after. Yes. Um, yes. That save is so unrealistic. Like it just doesn't make sense. Like yeah. for the, the captain of the team to make this mistake, giving up basically a three on O uh, and then to, for him to get the puck from the goalie and then get tripped and fumble it <laughs> again and then to make that unreal save by batting it down. And then on the same play before the next whistle for them to go down, if he had scored, that would have been crazy. But his teammate scores, Kent Johnson, yep, uh, yep. also a really nice goal, like just the poise involved in that. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was unrealistic. Like like you look at that in, you know, in, in a story and it doesn't make any sense. Like, oh, yeah, he he batted it down off the goal line. No, you don't. No one does that in gold medal overtime game. Like, it's just it just doesn't make sense. Um, but it was absolutely insane. Uh, that McTavish was. You said it was involved in three or four different plays. He actually even before he gave he pinched to give up the three on one. He actually made a really bad. Uh, I don't know you saw it blind pass to Bedard, and yeah. that almost was resulted breakaway. So he gave that gave away. He pinched. He got tripped, and then he so. It reminded me a little bit, uh, Parker, when Alex Burroughs slayed the dragon. That game was very eventful for Burroughs. He took a penalty, right. he scored, and then he was actually in the box when uh, I think uh, – no, no, he gave the puck away uh, when ta- leading the Taves tying goal. So, And then Burroughs ends up winning the game. So just involved in everything. It was very similar with McTavish. But, yeah, you know, um, I, I think a lot of people, too, started to notice that Bedard also did, made a really nice defensive play. He disrupted – the the Finland players shot and which slowed it down a little bit right yeah it wasn't a clean down. shot yes. um, which definitely had an impact I also I, I love watching Bedard which is is crazy how young he is um, but every yeah. single time he skates in and in overtime I think this happens two or three times where he skates in one on one with a defenseman and he just shoots he does his little pull <laughs> and tries to shoot it between the goalies or between the players legs because he gets so much velocity on his shot. Yeah. And it's so well placed every time. It's like, well, why wouldn't you just shoot every chance you get? Like he is going yeah. to be a, he's going to have like a 17, 18% shooting percentage when he goes to the NHL. Like wow. it, he is wow. so, so, so good at shooting yeah. the puck. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, he's just fun to watch. You know, I don't know enough about his game. Is he good enough, shifty enough, Parker, where if, if he, if players start to, try and take away a shot. Is he quick enough to get around them with a I little think bit so. of a okay. I, I okay. think so. There's a reason that he's been sort of that consensus number one for, yeah. for next year. Um, usually you don't get that from just a shot, right? Unless yes. you are like an Alex Ovechkin, uh, where it's where it's that level, but he is he is pretty quick. Um, yeah. but he's always just, just that release is it's otherworldly. Uh, and he's going to be one of the best you know, one of the best yes. shooters out there. I mean, you look at, you look at a guy like Austin Matthews, right. And he's a good skater, but he's not like the best skater, right? Like he's, he's not Connor McDavid, right. He can, he yeah. can get caught up to, but it seems that he can shoot from anywhere and score from anywhere. And, and Bedard is a little less of that quick release and more of just like a, a lethal wrist shot, uh, sure. which is, which is just insane. So we got Mason McTavish scores the, you know, makes the game, saving the gold medal saving save and yeah. then 17 points in seven games amazing we just talked about Connor Bedard who's going to obviously be the number one pick in next year's draft I guess we Most should likely, talk about yep. yeah we talk about Ken Johnson who scores the winning goal a lot of points like you said earlier in the in the tournament scores the quote Michigan goal what a player this guy what a player yeah and I was looking I remember looking at him last year as a guy I was hoping would fall to eight when the Canucks had the eighth overall pick Um, because it looked like, you know, that he was sort of rumored in the five to 10 range. Um, and uh, I was really hoping that he would be a guy that the Canucks were going for. And obviously being from, you know, here from Port Moody, um, that was, uh, uh, yeah, I was trying, I was trying to get something together for that show that night. Then the whole trade happened and, uh, and everything went, went South, um, so to speak, I guess South to Arizona, (laughs) <laughs> um, but yeah, he's, uh, he's very good. And that, that goal was unreal, um, yes. to basically, basically beat the goalie again, those cross ice pass. It's a move like in my beer league. It's what I try to do, right? If I'm coming in sort of like a two on one, it's passed across to me and I'm mm-hmm. coming in and I, I try to just keep going the direction the pass came from, cause the goalie's going to slide and he's going to get caught yeah. out. And it's really tough to make that, uh, to make that direction change. 
but that goalie did such an unreal job of getting that pad down and sort of staying in position. Um, very few players are going to take that tight shot into the goaltender's pad with people bearing down on him and able to grab the rebound, sort of tow it and get it over the pad. Um, yes. Just an unreal goal. So Yeah, so some great performances there, some really stand-up performances. So, uh, Parker, do you think – to you, uh, and let's not even talk about the the allegations as part of it yet. But right. the fact that it was August, the fact that the prices apparently were massively expensive, and then maybe there is this black cloud too. Do you think all of it just contributed to a weird tournament? Yeah, uh, there was so much. There was it was such a, a perfect storm, so to speak, yeah. uh, towards no there being no real desire for people to go right. You think about where it's held. It was held in Edmonton, right? Yep. It's 30 degrees every day right now in Edmonton. They don't, you, in Edmonton, you don't get a long summer, right? I guess you get a decent yep. summer, but it's either really nice or it's snowing in minus 30. <laughs> you know, people are out, especially like lots of these games are during the week at unreasonable times, right? Like during the day. Um, where in winter, it's hockey season. People are excited about it. There's build up, there's ads on TV, there's all. I bet I bet three quarters of the city of Edmonton had no idea this tournament was happening. That's right. That's like there, there, there was no marketing for it. I yep. literally had no idea it was on until the tweets from the first game were like, yeah, there's six people in the crowd or whatever it was. Cause there was nothing, <laughs> there was nothing exciting, right? There was no, there was no marketing. It wasn't pushed. Uh, I know viewership numbers were really low, obviously. And, it looked like it was a pretty full house for the gold medal game, but yeah, I mean, it's Canada and a gold medal game and it was on a yeah. Sunday, uh, much yeah. easier to get a, to get people out there. Um, than even a team Canada game on a Wednesday at 5 PM. Um, because yeah, it just, it wasn't marketed and it's, yeah. there's so much other stuff to do in the middle of a nice summer. All good points. I was, in Edmonton, as you know, at the end of July for work with the Pope Francis visit, I did not see a single banner, not a single poster, a single yeah. anything, billboard. And I even walked past the, the arena. What's it called now? Rogers Place, I guess. Yeah. I even walked past there to look at Gretzky statue and the five Stanley Cup statue display and nothing, not even a, a poster or, or banner about the World Juniors. It's crazy. Yeah, it I, crazy. I think I think TSN just called it a day on that one they said yep we've we lost on this one uh yeah. we're, instead of you know sort of sunken costs instead of going more into marketing out we're just gonna get it done and i if i'm tsn i'm probably like hopefully canada makes it far so we can sell some tickets and then yes. hopefully that's enough to get people excited about it again in four months time it's right. august 10th is not the same as boxing day right Boxing Day yeah. was is always has always been the start of the World Juniors. It's always been exciting. Uh, yeah, middle of August does not hit the same. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Did you even keep an eye on Lekaramaki, Yormo, and Truscott, the the three Canucks guys? I, I didn't know the gold medal game was happening until I got home. I knew nothing. I didn't pay a lick of attention to the tournament uh, whatsoever. Yeah. I didn't watch. Uh, I didn't watch one minute of it until yeah. the overtime. Uh, I just, yep. It, it just didn't feel like uh, it, it just it wasn't that interesting to me. Yep, that's fair. That's fair. Enough said. Move on. Enough said. I think so. Let's acknowledge the two donations. Uh, the botch guy comes in with a two dollar seventy nine donation. Says love the show. Only one month left before hockey season. Thank you, botch guy. I know. Um, I know about Parker. I know. I watch all your wrestling stuff all the time. I think I saw something that you just started a hockey channel too. So that's cool. Uh, leave a link and we can. We can help shout that out. And then Lucas, another donation, a second donation for him a little bit earlier. He says, and perfect. This is what we're going to get to next. The Kaji signing, two words, holy overpay smells like an all in move by Calgary. Uh, chips are all in. Okay, let's talk about this Kaji deal. I like Nazem Kadri a lot. Yeah. I think he is a heck of a player. Uh, he will be 32 years old on opening night. Mm. So he'll be getting paid for his 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, and 38 year old season. Uh, Seven million bucks a year. Uh, Seven million bucks a year. Great for the first two, maybe three years. Um, I mean, you look at his past production, right? This last year, 
may be an outlier, right? 87 points in 71 games, uh, oh. including basically being a point for game of the playoffs. Um, you go back to uh, the previous year, 32 points in 56 games, right? The 56 game season, clearly not as good. Um, and then the year before that, 36 points in 51 games, a bit better, um, including uh, over a point per game in the playoffs, 18 points in 15 games. Mm-hmm. Um, Nazem Kadri is a, a playoff performer. Uh, he always has been when he hasn't been suspended. Um, he's a really, really good player. And I think it's one of those times where you he was going to get term. If you wanted him on your team for yeah. this run, you needed to pay him term. Now, Calgary is in a position, uh, having lost Kachuk and Goudreau, bringing in guys like Huberto and now Caudry. Um, they have so many guys that are basically 29 to 32, right? Like I like Chris Tanev and Backland and all these other guys. Um, they are, their window is defined right? Jacob Markstrom uh, include that in the list too. They've got three years tops. Yeah. So for them, if you're going to go get a guy like Nazem Kadri, you could probably get him for four years, but you'd probably have to pay him nine, nine and a half, $10 million for that Mm -hmm. short period of time. Mm -hmm. Or you could give him seven years because those last four years don't matter. They're going to be bad. They have so few. They have like a handful of prospects similar to the Canucks, really. Uh, they have so few prospects in their cupboards. Um, you know, they might have a goalie of kind of the future and Wolf, maybe. But again, goalies are voodoo um, that I don't hate. I don't hate this deal. Uh, it's it's an all in move to get a guy for seven million dollars for the next three years in your window who is going to be really, really good during that time. And then you're going to fall off. And yeah. that's just going to happen. It was going to happen anyways. It's going to happen even more now. Yeah. Um, you know, you might as well just go for it. Maybe you're able to salvage something for that deal in three years. Probably not. Probably going to be tough to trade. Um, mm-hmm. But I mean, you're at the point where, yeah, you just had to, if you're going to go all in, you might as well go all in. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. There's so many angles to this and starting with the whole all in factor. Yeah. Even, even Huberto's contract might not look so good near the end of that big ten point five million dollar contract, but they're you're right. They're not worried about five, six, seven years down the road right now. They're worried about the next two, three, four years um, where they can get all these guys while in their in their prime, so to speak. So there's that. So I agree with you on that. I I don't. Oh gosh, it, Kaji's kind of one of those guys where I would like him on my team, but I I still remember very vividly him nailing Daniel Sedin in that game in Toronto. Right. And then yeah. Yannick Hansen having to come in after he got knocked down, coming to try and 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 come to Sedin's rescue. So he's a bit of a dirty player, but maybe you kind of need that. Um, I I can't wait to see Kadri and Evander Kane go at it six times a year now. Maybe that's the new that's the new Kachuk Cassian is going to be is going to be a uh, uh, Kadri and Kane. There's that, and then of course, and to tie this into Canucks, there's also what does this mean for JT Miller? Obviously, he's licking his chops now, considering he's oh. two years young. He's two years younger, and yeah, and yeah. better. Yeah, yeah. Just, I mean, he's had, had a has been better historically. Uh, yeah. I mean, had more points this last year. Uh, you know, just basically a, a better player uh, for the most part. Uh, yeah. I mean, what is it going to take to get a JT Miller deal done? More than that. Mm-hmm. Yes. You no. Know, absolutely. Absolutely. So, so many. Uh, does this? Um, yeah. I do. You think Calgary is a stronger team on paper than Edmonton right now? Now because of these changes. Yeah, uh, they they yeah. were last year. They yeah. they lose a couple players and did a pretty good job of replacing them, right? Yeah. Sort of got one for one uh, substitutions. Uh yeah. yeah, I think they're still in the same boat. I mean, they still have Jacob Markstrom. They've still mm-hmm. got uh, a really strong they've still got a pretty strong defense. Yeah. Um guys like Huberto will add a lot. Uh Kadri will add a lot. It's going yeah. to be you know, some good Sutter hockey over there. Um, and it's going to be a problem for teams like the Canucks. Yep, absolutely. So Calgary, Edmonton, whatever order you want to put them in, you know, I, I know I've always talked about the Canucks battling with Vegas and, and LA in that next tier. So this, this further, I guess, illustrates that for me is I, I do think the two Alberta teams are going to be 
a cut above the rest of the teams in the Pacific. Right, because now you also have the Oilers uh, locking up Kane, trying to push for Patrick Kane as well. Potentially. Really? Wow. Uh, wow. According to Gene Principe a few days ago saying, Patrick uh, Kane is plan number one, and Phil Kessel is plan number two for the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, again, some sort of shorter-term uh, aggressive moves, maybe to satisfy the likes of McDavid and Dreisaitl, but... Yeah. I mean, we're, uh, imagine if they get Patrick Kane, and we're talking about a team that is McDavid, Dreisaitl, Kane, Kane, uh, throw Nugent Hopkins on the third line for good measure. Uh, and Zach, you have, Zach Hyman, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you have an unreal offensive team uh, in Edmonton. And again, bad news for Vancouver, um, who yeah. hopefully, you know, maybe are getting ahead of Vegas in the power rankings and sort of battling that third spot with LA now, um, where... Edmonton and Calgary, like you said, six times a year, we're talking about two top teams that are going to hate each other and are going to be a <laughs> blast to watch, just maybe not be a blast to play against. It's going to be entertaining hockey for sure, just as all those games were. So, um, yeah, we'll see if our Vancouver Canucks can keep up in the race for sure. Absolutely. Matt. All right. Um that's all the news, I think. Uh, oh, one more. Speaking of Alberta, you were telling me that Wayne Gretzky is getting oh, sued. Oh, right. Yeah, Wayne Gretzky is getting sued for $10 million um, because apparently uh, his wife, Janet, was getting sponsored uh, by this gum company called OMG Gum that's meant to be like a weight management gum. They never, this gum, they never say like, we're, you're going to lose a ton of weight. It's all like, hey, it can help you manage your weight. You know, whether or not yep. how realistic that is uh, up to them. Apparently though, Wayne Gretzky bought a bunch of stock allegedly uh, in this gum and then started saying that he lost 35 pounds in two months from it when uh, uh, allegedly... Uh, according to the lawsuit, he did not lose 35 pounds. Uh, so, uh, so maybe a little bit of uh, stock manipulation there uh, from from uh, from the great one. What a strange story! It's wild. What a strange story! You you wouldn't think he need the money. Well, I hope not. Um, wow. Yeah, he's wow. got to sell more wine uh, to make up for that one. Apparently. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a lot. I mean, that's a lot of money. Now you think about how much money did Wayne Gretzky make during his career, right? Not as much yeah. as the top guys now are making, right? He wasn't that's making true. David money, right? That's true. Um, he's probably doing, he's probably doing good. Uh, you know, that maybe that TNT deals do a nice for him, but I, yeah. I doubt he's making 10 mil a year. And besides, yeah, exactly. And if, if, if that gum, you can really lose 35 pounds in, in two months. Oh my God, everyone would, would be. Yeah, everyone yeah, would be on that. Diet. Yeah, that would have been so much easier than than the last month. You know, <laughs> work hard that, to lose four four pounds. You could have lost thirty five in yeah. in two months. Yeah. Wow, I love. Okay, gum. that. Well, we'll, <laughs> well, we'll have to track the story then. That that's kind of interesting. Wow, mm -hmm. but it's the middle of August, so we knew that we'd be stretching. Uh, no pun intended with the gum uh, for stories for sure. But we're almost there. We're almost there because we're we're within a month of training camp as of tomorrow, which is pretty exciting. Thank, thank goodness. Yeah. Thank goodness. We got training camp. We got young stars. Where are young stars again? Uh, September 14 to 19 or something like that. Does that sound right? Something like that. 16 to 19. Okay. Yeah. That's gonna be that's gonna be interesting. Still mm -hmm. need to see if we get up to uh, to Penticton for that. That'd be cool. Are you gonna try? You're gonna try? I might try. I might, I might yeah. see if I can pull some strings with my, my Penticton contacts. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> see if I can get up there. Uh, oh, man. The full tournament package is already sold out. Uh, really? Oh, but I could get a VIP package. $400. That's a lot of money to go to six hockey games that are young stars. So what? Each team plays twice? That's it? Uh, looks well, like three times. each three team times, plays three, three times. times. Yeah. That would make so sense. Play. yeah, the Canucks play the Friday, Sunday, Monday. Um, okay. who puts a game on, who puts the last game on Monday at two 30 PM? The Canucks play a Friday game, a Sunday game and a Monday. You think they try to do like the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. 
yeah. the host. But yeah, I guess there's a lot of people from Alberta and the Okanagan. So uh, what is? I guess it's four days of three games each, as opposed to three days of four. Yeah, four days of three games. So each team. No, that doesn't make sense. What the heck am I talking about here? Uh, there's two games Friday, one game Saturday, one game Sunday, two games Monday. Yeah, because there's six games, not twelve games. There's twelve teams. Okay, I mean, right. Okay, I, get it, also, I get it. I get it. There's also the Penticton V's play a game there on the Saturday afternoon. Oh, okay. To throw that in the in the mix. Otherwise, uh, you could go three consecutive days of two games each, but then t- some teams are playing. Two of the teams are playing back to back. Right. So you can go. I mean, the 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 games that the days that have the double headers. I mean, it's only thirty five bucks to go to both. That's not that bad. Okay. Uh, and okay. it comes with a twenty dollar food and beverage voucher. <laughs> so it's pretty. It's affordable. Uh, the four hundred dollars was the VIP package where you get all right. seven games, uh, VIP buffet, yeah. cash bar. Uh, you get a VIP credential and a duffel bag. Yeah. Um, okay. So the hundred, hundred, hundred fifty bucks of gas each way plus you're staying for three nights. It's not so that it much. Be- it's not one hundred fifty bucks each way. It's probably 100? like one probably a hundred bucks. Well, about a tank each way, so about ninety okay. bucks. Yeah. Okay, so let's say two hundred for gas. You get you you split with a, someone else, hundred bucks a night for hotel. So you're looking at a thousand dollar weekend, basically. That's way too much for me to go there. I uh, <laughs> I have a place to stay, is what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm only going if I have a place to stay, uh, yeah. which would so only the gas and the tickets. Good. Uh, Parker's sleeping at a bus stop underneath outside yes. the arena. No, he'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. I'll just be floating <laughs> on Skaha Lake overnight. <laughs> okay. That'll be good. All right. Let me know if you go. I will cheer from you from here. All right. Uh, Hey, it's 1041, which means it's time for you guys to submit questions uh, because we're out of things to talk about. So if you guys, uh, Jaskaran, with the first question, do you guys watch preseason? Yes, kind of, unless I have anything else to do. Yeah. Not a big priority for me, quite frankly. I'll go to one of the three home games that they'll have at Rogers Arena, but yeah, not all three. Right with your with your tickets, just you got included. It. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm getting social media questions. <laughs> Jasper's saying, "Did I ever think about making an Instagram? I made one, and then I never did anything with it, and I made it private because, you know, why would I? I don't know. That's what do I do. I'd, I'd much rather do like TikTok or something if I'm trying to promote anything." Uh, cause you're way more likely to do something on that. By the way, Jaskaran is a big, uh, he's a big fan of yours. Like, I, I'm not even jealous. I'm very happy that, that he really likes you. You're getting called out Jaskaran. No, I, it's a compliment. <laughs> that was, that was 100% genuine. And I think it's a great thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Fangirl also <laughs> asks if I considered a Twitter account for this podcast. No, it's way too much work. And yeah. what, we're going to get the people who the people who are willing to follow the Twitter account for this show that happens at almost the same time, almost every week are the same people who are going to subscribe and turn notifications on YouTube. There's no real point. Uh, in know, my and, opinion. And, no, that's a good point. And, and fangirl. And I, I appreciate uh, your persistence. She asked me, I think, a, a similar question in one of my streams. And I, I said the same thing. It's it, because you and I have established followings already and we're happy to promote this show on our respective channels as well it's almost like starting from scratch there's yeah. there's not enough differentiation where i don't think it makes sense to to do that but uh yeah but the good you know always something to think about for sure that's only if we go like grow like crazy or whatever but we don't need i don't think we need to right now mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um mb do you think hoaglander bounces back this season or is it a poor fit under boudreaux i don't see i don't see how he bumps anyone on the top nine that we've been talking about so Somehow he's going to have to earn his stripes on the fourth line, gain Boudreaux's trust, play well defensively, which is very important, even more important than offensively, and then see what happens. You know, you never know. An injury may may open up a spot, but I, I'm not sure if he starts in the top nine at the start of the season. No, I don't think he does. Um, it's going to be, yeah, you know, there's the whole sophomore slump angle, which I, I mean, has happened too many times to be too much of a coincidence, I guess. Um, but it always mm-hmm. seems to me like a bit of a cop out. Um, that yeah, I guess he could bounce back, but I mean, what he's mm-hmm. going to play thirteen minutes a night? Or is he really going to be putting up more than you know twenty five points this year? Probably pretty unlikely. Um, yeah. Hopefully, I mean, obviously, I hope he does. Um, but yeah, it's going to be it's going to be pretty tough. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. 
Um, Jazz Grant says, can we talk about the 9 a.m. game against Detroit in February? Are you going to watch it? Is it is it like during a weir- a weir- a work day? No, it's got to be Saturday, Sunday. It's got to be, right? Uh, it's got to be. Schedule. I lost the... Uh, let me scroll down to February. There's December. February 11th. February 11th is... Yeah, it's a Saturday. That's fine. Yeah. Noon, a noon start in Detroit. Yeah, noon yeah. Detroit. 9 a.m. here. That's great. You wake up, watch some hockey, and then you don't have to worry about it the rest of the day. I remember in January 2012, right after the Canucks and Bruins finished their, their series six months prior, that the Canucks played in Boston. I think it was a Saturday or Sunday morning. I'm not sure it was a 9 a.m. I think it was a 10 a.m. start, so 1 p.m. start there. And I had a bunch of people over, and we were – we were yeah, eating sounds breakfast. awesome. Bre- Do yeah, we were lunch? eating breakfast food. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a little mosa and a and a hockey game on a Saturday morning. That sounds excellent. <laughs> Did we win? I can't remember. I think we won. Yeah, we. I think that's so. right. They, like game they were joking that we won. Yeah, we won game eight. But yeah, yeah. Cody Hodgson. That means enough. Yeah, exactly. Maybe that was his secret. Maybe he just needed to play more early games. <laughs> lobby the lobby the league. Yeah, yeah. They should have pushed for more nine a.m. games. <laughs> um, that would have been great. Um, Mr. Joker says, what do you think about the automatic puck over the glass rule? I mean, it's been in place for how long now? What, like 10, 15 years? Yeah. What do you think about, what do you think? If, would, do you think that rule should, should continue? Um, if I, if I try to block out what I hear all the media people say, cause I know even TSA made a funny song about it, a parody song, puck over glass. Yeah, I could, um, yeah, I was gonna say only give a minor penalty if it's intentional. But how do you tell if it's intentional? Like that's the whole uh, point, I guess. Everything else is a judgment call, though, right? Like yeah. I, I, I don't hate the idea of it being like, you know, it, like situation matters, right? Like, oh, these guys just got on the ice on a line change, and the faceoff got one back to D man, and he tried to shoot it off the glass and went straight over. Like that mm-hmm. to me, it's like, okay, that's just, just icing, right? Yeah. Like just yep. call it icing. That's basically yep. it's the it's the same effect, right? It's it's getting a whistle. Um, you, what's the difference between the guy shooting over the glass and the guy ripping it down the ice for icing? To Great me, point. I I think they should just be the same thing. Uh, having it as a penalty, and, and I mean, Joker says, is it past the game seven Stanley Cup overtime test? Right, like that's that's too much. That's too harsh of a penalty uh, in a game seven overtime when mm-hmm. you know. It's basically just an icing in my mind. Right. So call it a foul or infraction or whatever it is. That means it's a, a face off as opposed to a two minute minor. Right. And if it is intentional, yep. like a guy clearly just like, like fl- floats it over the glass. Like, yeah, that maybe it's a penalty, but like, uh, you know, I think a, uh, I think an icing is good enough. Yep. Yep. Agreed. Agreed. Mm-hmm. All right. Any other, of these ones you're liking? Yeah, a fangirl. Thoughts on the Islanders' four signings today? Well, the big one was Noah Dobson. It was three years, right? At four million each. Three by four sounds right. That's a pretty good contract. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for Noah Dobson, that is uh, that is really, really, really nice uh, for them. Uh, I don't think that even takes him. Does that take him to UFA? I don't think so. Nope. Nope. That's only six years. Yeah. Yeah. So that's. I mean, yeah. Smart contract. Yeah. So, and then Romanov was one. I can't remember the other two. Uh, so yeah, Romanov also three years. Okay. Um, of course they don't put the AAV in their tweets, which is super right. annoying or in their article. Right. Oh my oh. goodness. It's so obnoxious. Uh, and the other ones were Kiefer Bellows was the other one. That's right. Um, That's right. so Dobson is three year, 4 million per year. Romanov is three yep. year, two and a half. Um, and then Bellows is one more year at one point two million dollars, which I think takes him to UFA, if I'm mm. not mistaken. Interesting that they uh, announced them all on the same day. M- yeah, maybe how long is they them all right for? Yeah, yeah. Probably maybe once they knew they. Yeah. So actually, you add those up. There's a seven million they wanted to spend on Kadri. <laughs> mm. Oh, Kira Bellows still will be an RFA after this one. Okay. He's on his last. That'll be his last RFA year. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Very good. Um, Justin says, if the Canucks sign Rodriguez, who comes out? Joshua or Hoglander? Yeah, it pushes everyone down. Um, oh, gosh. And where do they get that money? Joshua's, 
you no, know, that's true. You might have to bring them in to and get rid of a Dickinson or something like that. So, but presuming that he comes, like they don't get rid of a Ford. I'm not sure how. Um, I think Joshua is more of a fourth line player than Hoglander is, quite frankly. Yeah. Uh, at that yeah. point, are you thinking trade? Are you just going to put Hoglander in the AHL for a while? Like, I think he's too good, good for point. that. Um, yeah. I don't. I don't think he he wouldn't have to go through waivers or anything. But yeah, it would be. It would be a tough, yeah, tough one to to figure out. Yeah, let's keep going down I mean, the line. There's going, oh, yeah. there's going to be Sorry. injuries, right? Like, there, like someone, yes. someone's going to get hurt within the first ten games. It happens to every team, uh, yeah. and then you kind of don't have to worry about it, right? You keep him in the press box until then. Sure. Speaking of Kuzmenko versus Mikheyev, Edmund says, "Who gets a hat trick first? I think Kuzmenko, Kuzmenko. is more yeah, likely. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think I don't think Mikheyev." Probably has has he had one hat trick maybe in his career? Um, sure. Yeah, they're they're hard to get. Most players don't. Um, so I would I'd go with none. Um, but Kuzmenko's <laughs> probably more likely just to higher ceiling. Yeah. See edits points for PD Horvat and Besser. Uh, I'm gonna go PD at what do you have the last two years? Sixty six. Uh, something like that. I'm gonna go with seventy four. Yeah, I'm going a little higher. I'm going to go okay. I'm going to say 80. Yep. That would be great. Uh, I'm going to okay. put Horvat at a uh, a nice even 55 because it's sort of about where he's always been. Maybe Man, 60. So, if, yeah. I'll give him the yeah, 60. He's at, he's at 60 once, um, yeah. but he ha- also he never gets the full year, right? He played 70 games last year at 52 points. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going 55. Uh, if he 60. plays all the games, yeah. I'll go you know around 60. Uh, for Besser, I am hoping around 60 as well. Although again, he's never gotten there, but he, he's only ever played one full season. That was the 56 game season last year, uh, where right. he was excellent. Uh, you know, 49 points, 56 games. But um, yeah, I think 60 would be would be nice from Besser. A nice 30 30, call it a day. Yeah, I like that. I've I've talked about, and I have a feeling that just with the burden of of his dad lifted in in one way, of course, uh, respectfully. I I think he's gonna have a big year. Uh, so I'll go sixty five points. So I basically overshot you by five points on each of those three, but that's okay. And that's that was the problem that we had. I, I'm adjusting <laughs> a little bit for our uh, from our last time we tried this. Uh, so where you we adjust were way yeah. over. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, yeah, and Canucks Bo says, yeah. Do you think Brock Besser uh, bounces back? And I say, yeah, I really do. And you and you made a good point, Parker. He actually had a really good season. It was just dogged with this tough personal struggles that he was going through but yeah his act he played every game this season which is pretty good who did For the first time right no did best play 50 best have played oh, no, 71 sorry. games you know, 71 yeah I, f- I forgot what did he play the year before do you have in front he played of all he played all 56 and the but in the shortened season okay. so he played 71 um, how many get points he get this year in 71 uh, only 46 uh okay but okay. last year he had 49 and 56 the previous year. right that's what i was thinking okay yeah thank you Thank you. Thank you. But yes, I want him to bounce back. The Canucks need him to have a big season for sure. Yep. All right. Any more you're seeing catching your eye? Uh, I saw one. Where did it go? I think it's gone now. I don't think it disappeared. <laughs> oh, Lucas, do you plan to represent Canucks after dark at Canucks game this season? We will figure that out. Uh, I'm sure we will be in the arena together at least a couple times and maybe even sitting together. We will figure that out. I am planning on going, especially if I can get cheap secondhand tickets again. Uh, nice. I am planning on, on going a fair amount. Um, yeah. Cause why wouldn't I? Um, exactly. Yeah. It'll be good. Got a couple of maybe a road game or two planned as well, which will be nice, Ooh. but I don't think, uh, I don't think you'll be at those ones at the that same time. Awesome. Well, that'd be a big fluke. <laughs> yes. That'd be crazy. NHL Canucks, do both of you know anything about the renovations at Rogers? All I know is that they were doing some work in the dressing room area for sure. Yeah, and Lucas says they're sort of minor facility oh, changes. So awesome, I don't think awesome. uh, I don't think we're going to be seeing too too much. No blue seats mm-hmm. yet, which mm-hmm. I cared about for a while, but now I just want comfortable seats. They're fine as they are, but more comfy yep. seats would be great. Sure, we'll take that. We'll take that. Shannon asks when the season starts. I think the official first day, if I'm looking, 12th. Friday, October. Oh, is it that late? I think the Canucks first game is the 12th. Right. 
and for everyone else, what am I saying? Maybe, maybe a day before all teams schedule uh, preseason, preseason, oh, preseason, October 11th. October's... There's two games on the 11th. What's October 7 then? Is that preseason still in Czech? Republic? I think so. Yeah, there's the oh. there's the global series. They those I doubt those are regular season though. I okay, think they're preseason. Fair. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. That that would make sense. That would make sense. I should I should learn these things. <laughs> it's not that important. <laughs> yeah, I just care about the Canucks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't, care, I don't care when the Rangers are playing, at least not yet. What else we got? Um, uh, Jasper asking if I find it worth it to go to the home opener. I like to go to the home opener whenever I can. Um, that's usually mm-hmm. one of the one of the more fun games because I like to see. I mean, I went to the home opener this last year, got to see the whole like Avengers theme, and I thought that was really cool. The first time I saw it, uh, the eleventh time I saw it, it wasn't as exciting. Um, right. That one, that kids, the one scream after the Canucks appear, and it's just so ear piercing. Yeah, and it's just like, <laughs> oh, it hits. So it's just, it's not mixed right. It, it's so ear piercing. Other than that, it's great. Uh, so I do usually like the home opener just for that one reason. That is, I can totally picture that. Uh, by the way, the season does start on the seventh because the Sharks and oh, those are, are playing. Season? Yeah, they're playing in Europe while the rest of the league is playing preseason game still isn't that weird just like when the Canucks and Calgary were playing <laughs> yeah I didn't gone. know that they were uh yeah remember so, when the Canucks were playing the mm-hmm. end of the regular season where the playoffs had started already <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah that's crazy yeah um yeah it's super neat though uh and then there's other global series games as well um yeah. weird that's cool good good so, job okay. yeah October 7. San Jose at Berlin. <laughs> and Nashville's playing against Bern as well. So they're playing it they're they are playing preseason games out there as well against some European teams. I guess that makes sense. You're going all the way over there. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, Nashville well, if they lose. Then they get relegated. <laughs> Berlin the, the is the new is the new team in the Pacific. The new team in the Pacific. Yeah, man. Travel got way worse for the Canucks. That's funny. Yeah, that would That's be funny. that would be cool. Uh like what else what else we got? Um uh Jaskran also thinks that Tyler Myers will win the Norris. I will bet you any amount of money, and I'll give you two to one odds that he won't. <laughs> At least two and a half. No, only two. <laughs> I can't risk that much. I can, and then this question is funny because I think I know what he's asking, but I think <laughs> I think you can take it two ways. You can tell I'm getting a little giddy. Hey, Parker, <laughs> would you be willing to meet people from chat in a Canucks game in the future like Clay? I think he's asking... Would you be able? Would you be willing to meet people like Clay does? Not would you be able to meet people like Clay? You see what I mean? I I, I, I can only meet people that are similar to you, is what he's saying. Yeah, you uh, you you'd, you'd run out of the arena pretty I will, quick. I will meet no one else, uh, but Clay lookalikes, only doppelgangers. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> if I run into people, I'm not setting yeah. up like a meet and greet or anything. But <laughs> if you run into me, you can say hi. Uh, yeah. If you if you run into me on the sky train, uh, say hi. Don't just take a picture of me and DM it to me after. Uh, yeah, that did happen once. Uh, <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> um, but other than that, yeah. If you if you run into me there, you want to say hi. Say hi. I've had a couple of people at Canucks games stop me and say um, that they listen to our show, or, or they ask me say say hi to Parker. So I, that's kind of cool too. So people people are thinking about you, buddy. That's that's nice. Yeah, no one's ever no no one noticed me when I was there. Uh the especially at the end of the season when I went to like three of the games by myself. <laughs> they will. That's this okay. is the year. Yes. Uh, uh nice donation there. I can I I can never say this guy's this person's Sagar's name. Sagar's Rage. Okay. I would guess. Uh do you feel management is making excuses? Look at the flames facelift. Well, the flames are in the middle of they're contending, right? Like they've got like you they've got a 
30 plus year old goalie and their best defenseman is over 30 and their best players are nearing 30 and all of their contracts expire in the next three years and they have very few prospects they are mm. on the clock they're in their window uh yeah they had a facelift but yeah they also had 110 points last year right 111 points they won 50 yeah. games um they had some of the fewest goals against uh in the nhl uh, they're in a position to make that facelift and try to go all in. Uh, the Canucks uh, were not. The Canucks don't have many prospects. Uh, they have some bad contracts to deal with. Uh, they didn't really have the currency to make a big facelift. They don't have cap space. Um, and I think everyone going into this new management kind of knew that there wouldn't be a lot to do now that could they have done more probably right i mean the whole jt miller saga that we've discussed ad nauseum um <laughs> but if if they went out uh, it's not like they were like ah eh, we're just gonna be lazy and not do it they they didn't get the offers that they wanted uh yes. which you know in my mind is fair um so could they have done more probably um but i don't think they're making excuses or anything i, I haven't heard them come out at all actually and say like ah we tried to do this but it didn't work we ran out of time there hasn't really been any of that they've been it's mostly been from media being you know uh, and fans uh, primarily online saying oh they should have done this this and this but the canucks haven't come out and and really made any excuses at all right right uh, yes um yeah and thank you for the donation of course to mm -hmm. uh Sager's rage we appreciate it. i agree with you parker and i think I think, yes, Calgary and Vancouver are simply in different places in their trajectory or, or where their teams are right now. And the thing about Rutherford, they don't make excuses. He's actually been very forthcoming. And he, and he flat out said, this has been a little bit harder. This has been a little bit slower than we expected, than we had hoped. So to me, that's not making excuses. It's an admission that uh, they probably wanted to do more. But like you said so well, Parker, their their hands are tied in certain ways. And yeah, just things aren't moving as fast as you, me, Every single person in this chat probably want them to be. Yeah, and they're just and you look around the league, like there hasn't been a ton. I mean, there's some there's been a couple of big trades, right? And you mentioned Calgary, yeah. and yes, Calgary made that one yeah. big trade. Uh, and I mean, yeah, trading away B Blake Coleman <laughs> plus uh future first uh for the cap space to go out and sign Kadri. Uh, I mean, do we want the Canucks doing that? Do we want the Canucks yeah. going out and and trading Oliver Ekman Larson and a first round pick so they can go out and sign Phil Kessel right now, <laughs> probably not. Right. That's probably not a great, that's probably not a great move um, yeah. based on where they're at uh, in their current cycle. Um, they also haven't gone out and signed any fourth, fourth liners to $12 million contracts. Like we saw in the past, mm. they've gone out and signed fourth liners to basically league minimum deals like Dakota Joshua um, and, and the likes who yeah. can fill those roles. Uh, Curtis Lazar um, who can fill those same yes. roles for cheap. Um, so in those cases, I have seen an improvement. Have I been, um, have I been like, uh, overjoyed by what they've done? No, uh, I think they've been kind of middling. Uh, yeah. and I, and I think that's sort of just the spot they're in, uh, without looking it up, guess how old Phil Kessel is 34. Very good. Right on. Very good. Very good. I was going to say 36. And I was like, nah, it seems too old. It seems a little, a little yeah, much. 34. Nice. <laughs> nice. Nice to done. All right. It's 1103, mm. uh, which to me means it's time pretty much to wrap up. Do you have any, uh, any, any last topics, anything you want to talk about? No, I think we did pretty good once again, and I, I'm I'm certain that this will be the last of, and not that it felt. I hope it didn't feel to you uh, viewers that we were stretching things. I, I thought that was pretty natural. Some great questions. Mm -hmm. We actually got time uh, to answer twenty minutes of questions. No, I, I truly think as players start to come into town, hit the ice, as Rutherford continues to say stuff in the media, and, and as Dollywall continues to get back from vacation, I think we'll have stuff to. I really hope we have stuff to talk about going forward. But yeah. We're within next time we talk, we'll be within a month away from training camp. So that's always exciting. Absolutely. And if you guys enjoyed, make sure you leave a like, hit subscribe. Feel free to rewind back to the beginning if you missed any part. Uh, as I say mm. every week, I know some of you did. Um, and uh, yeah, feel free to watch it back. It'll be uploaded on your favorite podcast platform in a matter of 15 to 20 minutes, hopefully. Uh, so you can listen to it there. 
otherwise, Clay, again, any, any, I didn't really give you the, any parting words, uh, even though you kind of said some, but any last (laughs) parting words for the second time? Uh, no, I'm good. Perfect. All right, folks. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, hopefully like Clay was saying, uh, we'll have some good Canucks news in a week, hopefully. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we will see you next time.